Today I'm going to just explain quickly what the idealized self image is. Hi, I'm Clarissa Mosley. I'm a psychotherapist and a gestalt therapist. And the idealized self image is a construct that was nominated by uh, Dr. Karen Horney, who was a another analyst apart from Freud in the um, earlier part of the century, who saw that Freud was a little bit off on a, on a few things. And as an analyst, she studied people and she realized that the ego ideal that Freud had named was, was actually better summarized by the idealized self image. So she saw people as being able to, or the child as being able to move either toward, away or against others. Three primary directions we can move. Towards someone, away was from someone when we need time and space or it's not safe, or against them if we need to aggress or defend or get something we want. And ideally we have a flexibility between these three options. However, in a dysfunctional upbringing, and I don't love that word, but it works for now, where the child wasn't seen for who they were, cultivated in their own natural talents and abilities, and supported in their own growth. If this was blocked and deficient, or they were neglected in some strong and lasting way, they couldn't develop authentically as who they were. So they had to develop a substitute self. When the child isn't being supported, cared for, loved, valued in their own development, there's a thing that permeates their upbringing called basic anxiety. Obviously, you cannot trust the environment to meet your needs, aka your parents. They're not there for you. They're not seeing you. They're not responding to you. So you're left with this sort of basic conflict. You either become indelibly anxious or you find a solution for that anxiety, often called a strategy, a coping strategy. And she saw the basic coping strategy in what, what was called then a neurotic was to develop an idealized self image. So basically the self wasn't good enough. It wasn't respected. It wasn't cherished. It wasn't seen. It wasn't valued by the people who were meant to help the child feel worthy, valuable, and um, loved. So the child then develops an idealized image. And this changes throughout life. So when the child was little, it might have been a, a projection into I'm going to be a superhero or a princess. Now, obviously, there's a relative amount of fantasizing that a child does in their play that is normal. What would happen in the more dysfunctional, neurotic upbringings of these children of, of people would be that they would develop an idealized image that would morph and change as they went through life. But it was always something that the ego had constructed. The personality had this aim of being the best, the greatest, the most perfect at X, Y, Z, the most idealized image that they could think of and that they wanted to live into that. And then the superego as Horn I called it, the tyranny of the shoulds, would whip you into this, into wanting, needing, being, and should already have been this idealized image. And that's where a lot of the shoulding comes from in particularly driven people. Unbeknownst, because the idealized image is always unconscious, all right? We might have ideal sorts, values around it, and there may be threads of actual capacities and truths that have been distorted into this idealized image. But it kind of rests in the background as this constant drivenness to be more, do more, become more, be more perfect. And the beration from your own inner critic, your own superego, that you should have been there already, you should have done it already, that is not good enough. And so this creates a drivenness within the personality, which is rested upon a basic anxiety, which is unconsciously an idealized self image that fuels all of the shoulds, coulds, would haves, and the tyranny of the shouldism that comes from your inner critic. 
So that's a very basic overview of what an idealized self-image is. And it might help you understand why whatever you do in your life is never good enough, why you are constantly plagued by shoulds, and why the drivenness propels you. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's a little bit short. It's probably a topic that involves a lot of understanding and fleshing out, but this was a little short snip to help you understand what I'm talking about if I'm mentioning idealized self-image. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like if you've enjoyed this video.